Good morning, uh, folks. I'm Congressman Joe Crowley, chair of the Democratic Caucus, joined by the vice chair of the Democratic Caucus, the gentlelady from California, Ms. Linda Sanchez. Um, I know that there is a snow emergency uh, for the city of Washington, D.C., uh, and as you can tell, uh, Linda Sanchez is well prepared for that. Rode my horse uh, me, not so much. <laughs> I do have surfboards on my tie, and that is an expression of hope uh, for spring, spring is here. Uh, we hope it physically gets here sooner rather than later, and we look forward to our summer months as well. Um, on a serious note, uh, our thoughts and prayers uh, with the people of uh, Maryland, uh, as well as the, our, our, our uh, fellow Americans in Texas, as uh, they deal with another school, a census school shooting in um, Maryland, and the census, uh, apparently census bombings that were taking place in Austin, uh, Texas. Uh, I think many are relieved that uh, that uh, seems to have subsided, yet I know that their law enforcement officials have warned people that they don't know if any other devices are still out there, so that to be on guard and be mindful, um, and um, we hope to learn more about uh, the uh, perpetrator uh, of uh, those uh, attacks and what the motivation uh, for that was. Uh, this morning we had an opportunity in our caucus to discuss uh, further uh, the negotiations as it pertains to uh, the omnibus. Those negotiations continue. Uh, I know it, as we speak, uh, the four leaders of the House and uh, the Senate are actually uh, meeting uh, to go over that. Uh, we also had an opportunity this morning to welcome to the Democratic Caucus for the first time uh, member-elect uh, from the 18th Congressional District in Pennsylvania, Mr. Connor Lamb. Our entire leadership team uh, welcomed the newest member, and there was tremendous excitement uh, expressed by the membership uh, for Mr. Lamb and his uh, election to the House. Uh, and with that, let me now turn to uh, the gentlelady from California, Ms. Sanchez. Thank you. So I want to begin by thanking it thanking the faithful few for making it in during the snowstorm. Um, good morning and welcome. Uh, I want to echo Joe's comments about the um, unfortunate um, gun shooting incident in Maryland. Uh, and I also want to take a moment to also acknowledge um, that last week we lost uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Louise Slaughter from New York, um, and she will be sorely missed. Uh, she was an a, a feisty fighter um, for many issues that she cared deeply about, and um, she was an example and a trailblazer for women. Um, I want to bring to everybody's attention that this Friday we are going to celebrate the eight-year anniversary of the Affordable Care Act. And despite all of the dire predictions that Republicans made about that bill, the sky hasn't fallen. In fact, for millions of Americans, the law has been a literal lifesaver. Nearly 20 million Americans got health insurance thanks to the Affordable Care Act, and our nation's uninsured rate reached record, has reached record lows. Million more Americans, including those who get their health insurance through their employer, because folks with employer-based insurance also got protection from the ACA. They gained the peace of mind um, that ACA eliminated the cripple, crippling annual and lifetime limits on benefits, they also got the security of knowing that insurers could no longer discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions like cancer or asthma by denying them coverage or making them pay uh, an astronomical amount of money for that coverage. Um, but unfortunately, we have seen President Trump and the Republican-controlled Congress, uh, they worked the entire last year trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act. And when they couldn't repeal it outright, they started to sabotage parts of the Affordable Care Act, uh, including with their tax scam bill, uh, which removed a very important piece of that, of that legislation, which was the individual mandate. And I just want to make everybody aware that the Trump administration and the Republicans in Congress continue to try to undermine the ACA uh, and it, the benefits that it, 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 it gives to many millions of American households. But House Democrats are going to continue fighting for quality, affordable health insurance for all Americans. And we're doing everything we can to shine a light on the sabotage efforts that are ongoing um, by the administration and the Republicans. Um, we remain uh, steadfast in trying to promote um, policies that create 
good paying jobs and invest in our economic future that look after our families and make sure that they have the health insurance that they need. Um, I want to thank the members of the Appropriations Committee for their work uh, on the omnibus bill, which is obviously there are ongoing negotiations. They have been working, the um, Democratic appropriators have work, been working very hard to try to get out uh, of that bill all of these very cynical poison pill writers um, that the Republicans uh, want to add to that bill. Um, I stand ready to work with my Republican colleagues across the aisle to pass a responsible funding bill that keeps our government open and that puts the middle class first. And I um, just hope that Republicans will work with Democrats on passing an acceptable omnibus that is free from those poison pill writers. And with that, I will turn it back over to our chairman uh, for questions. And before I do it, let me also add my comments about the, the loss of uh, Louis Slaughter. I uh, knew Louis Slaughter for almost a quarter of a century, and she served here in the House of Representatives for more than a quarter of a century. Uh, a lot of people don't know about Louis Slaughter. Uh, well, she was from Kentucky. She represented parts of Rochester and Monroe County and parts of Buffalo uh, in the, uh, the House of Representatives for, uh, for almost a quarter of a century, over a quarter of a century. Uh, that her lineage uh, in this country goes way back. In fact, uh, uh, a direct uh, descendant uh, of uh, Daniel Boone, as well as a, a family uh, connection to Abraham Lincoln and his family. So the House lost a lot um, in terms of that linkage to our past in the passing of Louis Slaughter, but we really lost a, a, a tremendous champion for working men and women uh, uh, and uh, an, an amazing advocate uh, for women's rights, having uh, represented uh, Seneca Falls and uh, the uh, Rochester area and uh, understanding the history of that community. Uh, she was an incredible and outstanding leader and uh, she will be missed here in the House of Representatives. Most importantly, we'll, we're going to miss her humor. She was an incredibly witty woman uh, and uh, she used that wit uh, in a very tactful way at times and could, uh, could decimate someone, and, but she could also lift you up as well. And we will certainly miss her and her, 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 uh, her, her perch uh, at the uh, Rules Committee where she uh, was able to get to the bottom of issues and make them simple for the American people to understand. So she will be sorely missed. Uh, with that, we'll be happy to answer uh, some questions. Yes, sir. Um, what do land and location blame mean for um, the push from the far left of the caucus who says you guys need to be much more progressive and also the message? I think the message we get from certainly the Lamb election is that uh, all politics is local, as Tip O'Neill has said and what, uh, in his famous book. And what uh, Connor Lamb proved is that keeping the issues local, talking about Social Security and Medicare uh, and the threat that they're under by this Republican administration and by the Republican Congress, uh, talking about issues that are local to the community themselves and the passion that he brought in representing them, uh, I think speaks volumes to uh, not just uh, these, uh, these two elections but other elections as well. Uh, and for all of us, I've been counseling uh, people who are running that remember to keep it local. People, people really identify with the local legislator. And I think that's what uh, certainly Connell Am and I would have to uh, suggest that maybe that's what happened in, in Illinois 3 as well. Uh, but the people have decided and uh, uh, we are, uh, we're moving forward and uh, we're a Big Ten party. And I think that's also represented by those elections as well. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So we would take advantage of this whole party infrastructure or the party to rally around him who is the uh, hard rock primary for the city, and then you just... No, well, he's the, he's the Democratic nominee, and he'll have the support of the Democratic caucus. Yeah. 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 And if you know anything about his uh, Republican opponent for the general election, you know that Democrats will be united behind Dan Lipinski. You know, somebody with, with uh, um, you know, who has uh, identified with um, extreme uh, far-right... Um, Nazi propaganda is, is not somebody that we want serving in the United States House of Representatives. I would even suggest that even more interesting, maybe uh, there, there, were, there were a number of, of interesting races that took place yesterday. So um, I think uh, it bodes well for Democrats uh, running, moving into these uh, 2018 elections. Anyway, yes. It's not clear yet, but I, I think things seem to be moving towards resolution. I don't want to speak too soon. We don't know what impact the weather will have <clears throat> on this as well. Uh, 
but my understanding is that uh, the mayor has declared it an emergency and we don't know what impact that will have on services here in the city as well. So that is of concern certainly to our staffs, uh, to all staff here in the House and the Senate. Uh, but it, it appears to be as though things seem to be moving forward. So we, uh, we, we hope there is no shutdown. Uh, we don't believe that's the way we should be governing. We certainly hope we don't go back to CRs. That's also not a good way to govern. We've continually said that. Um, and we'll wait and see what happens. Thank you. Thank you all.